Mr. McCoy back with part 16 of The City of Ember. As you recall, Lena told Dune, come again tomorrow and while you're at work, look for the rock marked with E. That night, Dune had trouble sleeping. He couldn't find a comfortable position on his bed. It seemed to be made up of nothing but lumps and wrinkles and it squeaked and groaned every time he moved. He flailed around so much that the noise woke his father who came to his room and asked, what is it, son? Nightmares? No, said Dune, just can't sleep. Are you worried? Frightened of anything? Dune wanted to say yes. Father, I'm worried because the mayor of our city is taking for himself the things that people need and I'm afraid because any day our lights could go out forever. I'm worried and afraid a lot of the time, but I'm also excited because I think there is a way out and we might find it. And all those feelings are whirling around in my head, which makes it hard to sleep. He could have told his father everything. His father would have plunged in with great enthusiasm. He would have helped them decipher the instructions and expose the mayor's thievery. He would even have come down into the pipeworks and helped search for the rock mark with E. But Dune wanted to keep these things to himself for now. Tomorrow, the guards would announce that an alert young boy had uncovered the mayor's crime, and his father, hearing the announcements along with the rest of Ember, would turn to the person next to him and say, that's my son they're talking about, my son. So in answer to his father's question, he simply said, no father, I'm all right. Well then, see if you can't lie still, said his father. Good night, son, he added, and closed the door. Do you agree with Dune's decision not to tell his father everything? Share what you think with your fellow listener. Dune smoothed out his covers and pulled them up to his chin. He closed his eyes, but he still couldn't sleep. So he tried a method that had often worked for him before. He would choose a place he knew well, the school for instance, and imagine himself walking through it, picturing it as he went in in minute detail. Often his thoughts would wander, but he would always bring them back to the imaginary journey and something about doing this would often make him sleepy. This night he decided to retrace his explorations of the pipeworks. He held his mind to the task for a long time, picturing with all the clarity he could muster everything he had seen in that underground realm. The long stairway, the tunnels, the door, the path along the river, the rocks along the path. He felt sleep drawing closer heaviness in his limbs, but just as he was about to give in to it, he saw in his mind's eye the wrinkled rocks that bordered the river at the west end of the pipeworks, the rocks whose strange ridges and creases had reminded him of writing. His eyes flew open in the dark, his heart began to hammer, and he gave up on sleeping and lay in a state of terrible impatience for the rest of the night. The next day was song rehearsal day. Everyone was let off from work at 12 o'clock to practice for the singing. It was a slow morning for messages. Lena had a lot of time to sit at her station and Garn Square and think. She put her elbows on her knees, rested her chin in her hands, and stared down at the pavement in front of the bench, which was worn smooth by the many feet that had passed there. She thought about the mayor down in his room full of plunder, gorging on peaches and asparagus and wrapping his huge body in elegant new clothes. She thought of his great stack of light bulbs and shook her head in bewilderment. What was he thinking? If he still had light bulbs when everyone else in Ember had run out, would he enjoy sitting in his lit room while the rest of the city drowned in darkness? And when the power finally ran out for good, all his light bulbs would be useless. Possessions couldn't save him. How could he have forgotten that? He must be thinking the same as Looper. Everything was hopeless anyhow, so he'd live it up while he could. She leaned back against the bench, stretched her legs out, and took a long breath. Very soon the guards would storm into the secret room and seize the mayor as he sat stuffing himself on stolen goodies. Uh, maybe they already had. Maybe today the stunning news would come. Mayor arrested, stealing from citizens. Maybe they'd announce it to the singing at the singing so everyone could hear it. No one came with any messages to be delivered, so after a while, Lena left her station and found a step to sit on in an alley off Kalu Street. She pulled back her hair and braided it to keep it from sliding around. 
Then she took from her pocket the copy of the instructions she'd made just after she sent her note to the mayor. She unfolded it and began to study it. This was what she was doing when a little before 12 o'clock she looked up to see Dune running toward her. He must have come straight from the pipeworks. He had a big damp patch of water on one leg of his pants. He spoke in an excited rush. I've been looking all over for you, he said. I found it. Found what? The E. At least it looks like an E. It must be an E, uh, though you wouldn't know it if you weren't looking for it. You mean the rock marked with an E in the pipeworks? Yes, I found it. What do you think's going to happen now? Share with your fellow listener. He stood breathing hard, his eyes blazing. I'd seen it before, but I didn't think of it as an E, then just a squiggle that looked like writing. There are all these rocks that look like they're covered in writing. Which rocks? Where is it? Lena was on her feet now, bouncing with excitement. Down at the west end of the river, near where it all goes into that great hole in the pipeworks wall. He paused, trying to catch his breath. And listen, he said, we could go there right now. Right now? Yes, because of rehearsals, everyone's going home, so the pipeworks will be closed and empty. Uh, but if it's closed, uh, how will we get in? Grinning, Dune produced a large key from his pocket. I ducked into the office on my way out and borrowed the spare key, he said. Lister, he's the pipeworks director, uh, was in the bathroom practicing his singing. He won't miss the key today, and tomorrow everyone will be off work. He did an impatient shuffle. So come on, he said. The town clock struck the first of its 12 noontime booms. Lena stuffed her copy of the instructions back into her pocket. Let's go. The pipeworks was empty and silent. Lena and Dune went up the hallway past the rows of boots and the slickers hanging on their hooks. They didn't take any of these for themselves. This was not a pipeworks tunnel that they were about to enter, they were sure. It wouldn't be dripping with water or lined with spurting pipes. They went down the long stairway and out into the main tunnel where the river thundered alongside the path, its dark surface strewn with flecks of light. Dune led the way along the river's edge. As they neared the west end, Lena saw the rocky outcroppings Dune had described to her. They were strange, bulging shapes creased with lines like the faces of the very old. Not far beyond, Lena could see the place where the river disappeared into a great hole in the pipeworks wall. Dune knelt down beside a clump of stones. He ran a finger over their convoluted surface. Look here, he said. Lena stooped down and peered at the deeply carved lines. It was hard to see the E at first because it was surrounded by such a tangle of other lines and because she was expecting it to be an E drawn with straight strokes. But once she saw it, an E drawn with curving lines, a script E, she was sure it had been carved on purpose. It was centered on its stone and its lines were deep and even. So from here we should look down at the river, said Dune. That's what the instruction said, down riverbank to ledge. He lay on his stomach next to the rock and inched forward until his head hung out over the edge of the path. Lena watched him anxiously, his elbows stuck up on either side of him and his head bent down and was nearly invisible. He stayed that way for long seconds. Then he shouted, yes, I see something, and scrambled to his feet again. You do it, he said. Look at the riverbank right below us. Lena did as he had. She lay down and pulled herself forward until her head was over the ledge. Eight feet or so below her, she saw the black water churning by. She tucked her chin in and looked at the riverbank. It was a sheer rock wall, straight up and down and slick with spray, and at first, that was all she saw. But she kept looking, and before long, she could make out short iron bars bolted into the bank one below the next, almost directly below her. They were like the rungs of a ladder. They were a ladder, she realized. The bars provided a way to climb down the riverbank. Not a very appealing way. The bars looked slippery and the water below was so terribly fast. And because of the dimness and the flying spray, she couldn't actually see if there was a ledge at the bottom or not. But the E was clearly an E and the bars were clearly a ladder. This must be the right place. Who will go first, said Dune. 
You can't, Lena said, getting to her feet and stepping away. All right. Dune turned so that his back was to the river and he eased himself carefully over the rocks, feeling for the first rung with his foot. Lena watched as he sank out of sight, little by little, and after a few moments his voice called up from below. I'm down. Now, you come. Lena inched backward just as Dune had, letting one foot dangle over the edge, lower and lower, until it touched the first rung of the ladder. She shifted her weight to that foot, clinging with cold fingers to a ridge in the rock and lowered herself slowly until she was standing on the rung with both feet. Her heart was beating so fast she was afraid it would shake her fingers loose from their grip. Now she had to move downward. She felt for the next rung with her foot, found it, let herself down. It would have been easy if it hadn't been for the river waiting below to swallow her. You're almost here, called Dune. His voice came from right below her. There's a ledge, one more rung, and you'll feel it. She did feel it, solid beneath her foot. For a second, she stood there, still clutching the ladder. The surging water was only inches below her now. Don't think about it, she told herself. She moved sideways, two steps to stand next to Dune, and there in front of them was a rectangular space carved out of the river, and it was in the river wall, rather like the entry hall of a building. It was perhaps eight feet wide and eight feet high and would have been invisible from anywhere else in the pipeworks. You had to have climbed down the riverbank to see it. They stepped into this entry hall and walked a few steps. Enough light to see by came from the tunnel behind them. Lena stopped. There's the door, she said. What, said Dune. The water roared so loudly they had to shout to be heard. The door! Lena yelled happily. Yes, Dune yelled back. I see it. So what's coming next? Share your prediction with your fellow listener. And now, more of part 16 of The City of Ember. At the end of the passage was a wide, solid-looking door. It was dull gray, mottled with greenish and brownish blotches that looked like mildew. Lena put her palms against it. It was metal, and it felt cold. The door had a metal handle, and just below the handle was a keyhole. Lena reached into the pocket of her pants for her copy of the instructions. She unfolded it, and Dune looked over her shoulder. Together, they squinted at the paper in the dim light from the main tunnel. This is the part right here, she said, pointing. Adi down iverb nick, to edge a pr- eight, look, axe to the water, Find door of bow, cur, key, behind small steel pan, the right, rim, e, open, do. Lena ran her finger along line three. This must say something something down river bank to ledge approximately eight feet below. That's what we've just done. Then four is something about backs to the water, find door something, and then key behind that must be key behind and then there's the small steel pan do you see a small steel pan dune was still studying the paper it says right we should look to the right of the door and quite easily they found it it wasn't a pan at all but a square small square of steel embedded in the wall a steel panel said lena She ran her fingers across it and felt a dent at one side. When she pressed there, the panel sprang open easily and silently as if it were glad to have finally been found. Inside, a silver key was hanging on a hook. Lena reached for it and then drew her hand back. Shall I do it, she said, or shall you? "Uh, You do it, said Dune. So she took the key from its hook and put it in the keyhole. She turned it and felt a click. She grasped the door handle and pushed, but nothing happened. She pushed harder. It won't budge, she said. Maybe it opens outward, said Dune. Lena pulled. The door still didn't move. It has to open, she said. We unlocked it. She pulled and pushed and hauled on the handle, and the door moved, not inward or outward, but sideways. Oh, this is how it goes cried Lena. She pulled the handle to the left, and with a deep, rasping sound, the door slid away into a slot in the wall. Behind it was a space of utter darkness. They stared. 
Lena had expected to see something when the door opened. She had thought there would be light behind it and a path or a road. Shall we go in? said Lena. Do not. Lena stepped across the threshold. The air had a dank, stuffy smell. She turned to the right and put her hand against the wall. It was smooth and flat. The floor, too, was smooth. There might be a light switch, she said. She patted the wall just inside the door from the floor to as high as she could reach, but found nothing. Dune turned left and felt on the other side with the same result. Nothing, he said. Very slowly, keeping a hand to the wall and tapping the floor cautiously with their feet before every step, Dune and Lena made their way in opposite directions. Each of them soon came to a corner and turned again. Now they were going deeper into the dark. They both had the same thought. Is this the way out of Ember, a long, dark tunnel? Must we go mile after mile in absolute darkness? But suddenly, Lena gave a yelp of surprise. We'll find out what Lena sees and so much more as the City of Ember continues.